evening everyone welcome back to my channel <clears throat> this is lauren aka lolo owner of lolo's crochet creations also be sure to follow me on my instagram i do have a facebook but i really don't post on there that much but also don't forget to follow me on tiktok as well um so i know during the last video or towards the end of the last video i should say i stated um that you should grab some cotton yarn a five millimeter or letter H hook and we are going to make our first washcloth um, using the stitch single crochet um, so I just wanted to kind of uh, help you know the newbies out there get as much practice as you can with the single crochet stitch and then for the half double crochet we'll probably try and make um, a coaster and or a cup koozie um, I don't know yet, but then I also want to teach you all how to crochet in the round, especially like whenever you're making a hat, um, maybe the base of a handbag or purse. Um, working in the round is uh, what that's good for. Um, but uh, it's just so many techniques out there, and I just want to make sure that I share them with you all, give you my tips and tricks that work for me whenever I crochet. And if you ever have questions, just let me me no so without further ado let us get started and make our first fir first first washcloth all right let us get started all right so i'm actually using my um yarn bowl that a really good friend of mine gifted me so um to keep my yarn kind of not all over the place and whatnot so um let's see so let's get started with making our first washcloth we will use the terms chain and single crochet um, and you are going to start with a chain of 31. Uh, however many chains you want to do really doesn't matter um i'm cho i chose 31 chains because um i kind of wanted it to be about nine and a half to ten inches um, length and width so I decided to do 31 chains with my H hook um, make sure you do chain loosely because you do not want your beginning chain to kind of scruffle up um, and crunch up because you chained too tight um, so just make sure you try to chain loosely um, and then whenever you start whenever we do start single crocheting try not to pull your yarn so hard um, <clears throat> excuse me it's just best to just take some deep breaths this is just a very easy project for us to get some single crochet practice with but in the end you may want to make some more dish towels you know for family members or gift ideas who knows so um, before you know it you'll be make, you'll be crocheting a top which is just probably made of two rectangular uh, panels and then just sewing on the arms to your sweater or shirt that you're wanting to make really easy stuff but without further ado let us get started so first you're going to do your slip knot and this is the way I do my slip knot okay and you may hear my dog in the background eating his food he always says that and then I place my hook inside of this little loop and then I kind of pull tightly and so I I have it tight, but then I have it kind of loose so it can kind of move up and down the hook, okay? All right, so we're going to chain 31, okay? Remember, chaining um, is the foundation of either how wide or how long you want your piece to be. Most of the time, it's how wide you want a piece of your work to be, and then yeah sometimes i'll say yeah the length because you know whenever you're making the scarf or something you kind of want to chain the length and then you work on how wide you want your scarf so sometimes it can be um chaining the length of something you're wanting like a scarf and then sometimes you have to chain the width of something like what we're making is a towel or like a coaster or something like that so um i don't know where i'm at i'm just chaining along the way so let me just count really quick one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twen
16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. Okay, 25. All right, 25. <clears throat> 27, 28, 29, 30, and then 31. All right, so here we have our 31 chains. Look at her. She's so pretty. Oh, my gosh. Even though it's just a chain, she's so cute. So, anyway, um, in the second chain from the hook, this is not a chain. This is just your the yarn on your hook that you'll be working with. This is your chain. So, one two so this right here is where we're going to work our first single crochet all right so insert your hook yarn over pull up a loop yarn over pull through two loops that is it and you're going to go into this top part of your chain okay and then insert your hook yarn over pull up a loop yarn over pull through two loops and as you can see as I'm crocheting a lot of my <clears throat> techniques are moving the hook and the hook is kind of doing a lot of the work for me and you're just going to place one single crochet in each chain until the end so one single crochet in this chain, one single crochet in this chain, and then one single crochet in this chain, and so forth and so on, until you get to the very end. And for this project, you will need, like I stated, um, a size H or 5 millimeter hook, cotton yarn, preferably cotton yarn, unless you're just wanting to make a square of single crochets, then that works too, or you may want to use that, I don't know, square for something, I don't know, but um, I just wanted to provide you all with a quick, fun, easy pattern to, you know, get that single crochet practicing in. So, um, and as you can see, I'm taking my time because, I, and I still do this till this day, because I don't want my first chain, or not my first chain, but my first row that I'm building off my chain to be super duper tight and just, you know, pulling the yarn with a lot of tension does impact that. So I'm holding my yarn loosely, and as you can see, my hook does most of the work. The hook does a lot of your work. And as you, you know, the more you continue practicing crocheting you will start to really understand and know okay this is how I need to hold my yarn this way this is more comfortable for me um, it feels more natural this way and you know this is how I want to hold my yarn in my hook cool <clears throat> as I always say these are techniques that I use um, for my project so and it works for me so I'm just sharing my knowledge but um, I wanted to stop real quick, just kind of show you what we have so far. Okay. And when you come to the very end, it's going, you may think that this portion right here, which is not, that is your, um, that's your slip knot. You don't put a single crochet in there. That's your first chain right here. So this is where you're going to put your last single crochet. Okay. <clears throat> so insert that hook. Yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through both loops, and there goes your row one. Okay. All right, so moving right along, this is actually going to be your repeat row. So you're going to chain one, turn your work, and then let me just pause really quick and show you. So. There goes our beautiful V's that we'll be working into. Some patterns say work in the back loop only or the front. <coughs> <coughs> All right, so <clears throat> right here is your V's that you'll be working into. Right there, right there, right there. Those little V's right there at the top, that's what your stitches look like. 
and that's what you're going to be working into now don't work into this because that's your chain one the chain the chain ones at the end keep your edges straight for the most part um and that's why I say you have to chain one at the very end. Um, sometimes patterns say you don't have to chain one, but I think that in the beginning, I think it's good to learn to, you know, just best practices to know how many chains to chain at the end of a row for, you know, stitches that you may use. So for a single crochet, you're going to most likely chain one, and that's the chain one. <clears throat> so that's my chain one. And now we're going to work our first single crochet into this V right here not here this is your chain this V stitch right here is where your first single crochet is going to go into all right turn your work after you chain so we chain one turn your work and then work your first single crochet in that first single crochet <laughs> and then you're going to just keep going down the row oh pro tip so I was using another hook earlier today with my with my um, almost finished dish, dish towel that I'm working on and I noticed that sometimes plastic hooks are a little bit better than the aluminum um, or metal hooks. I think that especially with this type of yarn it just glides you know through each stitch very easily and smooth and I actually um, purchased this hook at Hobby Lobby I forgot the name of the brand but I think it is like Hobby Lobby's brand of hooks and I absolutely love these hooks because like I said they glide through your work so easily and it just kind of makes your work kind of go by quicker than you know hooks that may catch on to one of the strands in this yarn and whatnot but this hook just it just glides through each each stitch and it's 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 amazing so highly suggestion this is not an ad or anything just a suggestion <laughs> so we're almost near the end and see sometimes like I'll probably go too fast and maybe mess up with my stitches you know I still mess up every now and then but you know Crocheting is a learning lesson itself, and, you know, I'm just a big stickler about wanting to make sure everything looks nice, neat, and dang near perfect, so. All right, so once again, let's come to the end of this row. <clears throat> right here is going to be where you put your last stitch, so you see this, um, this V right here. That V right there is where you're going to put your last single crochet. Okay, insert the hook like that, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two loops, and that is it. And that was your repeat row. So you're going to repeat row two up until your um, towel measures um, nine and a half to ten inches. Um, and if you do have another alternative color different from the color yarn you're using for the main part of the towel, Grab that yarn. We're going to place a border around our towel and it's going to just consist of single crochets and that's it. So just continue working the one single crochet in each stitch. And whenever you are near the end of your work, reach back, well not reach back out because we'll be here. Come back and then we will um, Kind of learning a technique to attach yarn to sorry y'all my dog was shaking it off in the background um trying to attach yarn to like your work so that way <clears throat> excuse me so that way um you can add you know other colors to say your project and whatnot and then you'll learn how to add a new color i guess with yarn today so we shall see my dog is whining, so I actually got a little bit distracted just then. I don't know what he's whining about. So, let's see. But yeah, so I'm going to try that again and say if you have some, like a different color yarn, grab that yarn because we're going to add a border around our dish towel. Um, we're going to learn how to do, you know, the border and then also how to attach a new color 
um, a, a new color when, when it comes to adding, you know, say a different color to a project that you're wanting to do. So, <clears throat> okay. All right. And so this is two rows of single crochets. Rock there. Okay. So I actually like this yarn. I want to use this yarn for something else, but I wanted to also use it to show you all um, how to do the single crochet and how to start off your dish towel or washcloth, whatever you want to call it. Um, so after we get our, our, after our piece measures about nine and a half to 10 inches, we are going to learn how to add a new color of yarn to your project. That way we can add a border around our, um, our dish towel and it's going to just consist of single crochet. So a technique that you already know. I know sometimes some, um, sometimes some borders are a slip stitch all the way around but I don't really like to do a slip stitch it kind of makes the work a little bit tight and it just feels weird I don't know it feels like I don't know I know you can loosely stitch a slip stitch but I just rather use a slip I'd rather use a um, slip stitch whenever I'm about to near the end of my work but um, using it as a border I personally just don't like to use it I'll probably use a single crochet or a pretty pico stitch but um, continue with your single crochets and don't forget at the end chain one each time and you should see your towel start to shape and it should be in the form of a square like as close to a square as you can get it because you want your um, length to match your you want your width to match your length of how long you want your towel so with that being said just continue doing one single crochet in each stitch chain one at the end and then meet me back whenever you're near the end. All right, welcome back, y'all. I actually worked on this earlier for the purpose of this video. So this is what mine looks like so far. Um, not so far, but towards the end. Um, I actually ended up doing a total of 30, I think it was 35 or 36 rows. I wanted to end it on a on a even note. Why? I don't know. I just wanted to. <laughs> but um, I ended on about, I think it was 36 rows. And so I wanted to show you, like I said, how to go about adding um, yarn, a different, you know, contrasting color yarn to your work. So that way you can add a border or start a new row in a different color, things like that. And as I always say, these are the techniques that work for myself and I just want to share them with others so um, other crocheters may have their own techniques of joining yarn but um, the way I do it I feel like it's a little bit more secure it'll be kind of you know it'll it'll kind of be a little bit um different and weird in the beginning because it'll feel it'll seem like your work is just about to fall apart while you're trying to add a different color of yarn but um <clears throat> It's actually quite pretty cool so here goes my square um, and it is measuring because I measured it before it is measuring nine and a half by nine and a half so that's how um, wide and long my dish towel is okay all right so we are at the end of our row and now we're wanting to add on a contrasting color Gosh, y'all, I usually am more prepared. There we go. All right. Okay, so I just chose orange because, as you can see, I don't really have too much of that yarn. And this is actually now going away, but it's all good. So I like to go ahead and make a slip knot. So this is us joining yarn on joining a new um, or a secondary color of yarn. So this is how I attach my new yarn <clears throat> so I kind of put that to the side put that slip knot to the side right there insert your hook okay grab this yarn bring it down to the other like right there where you have three loops your new yarn the stitch and the um, the yarn on your hook okay and then I don't know how that's staying there, but it's staying there. And so try to tighten your um, slip knot like so. 
and then you're going to drop the main color yarn so you're going to drop that yarn you're going to pick up your working yarn for your new color and this is where it kind of gets tricky so first and foremost pro tip always make sure you're working with your working yarn the yarn that's attached to the yarn or the ball of yarn and not with your um with your tail i've actually done that before especially like whenever it comes to chaining so just make sure you're not working into the tail you're working into your working yarn okay all right cool so that's it so what i like to do is just kind of grab everything and just put it under my um middle and my pointer finger so then i'm going to grab my yarn and then pull through as if I'm doing a single crochet and instead of using the green yarn you're going to use your new yarn like this and finish your single crochet like so <clears throat> and then just pull everything tight okay and yes I'm about to show you once again all right so see it's attached there and so now when we work down the yarn we're going to actually place three single crochets in each corner actually no we're going to place two we're going to place two single crochets in each corner all right so i'm gonna do that one more time for you because i know that was kind of you know a little bit tricky but let's do this once more so this is my working yarn of my main color okay so this green is the working yarn for my main color for my towel okay so i'm going to push that little booger out the way all right so now i'm going to grab my um other yarn the contrasting color yarn and i'm going to make a slip knot like so okay and then i'm going to put place that down kind of pull give it a little bit of tension and then put that working yarn from your main color behind your pointer finger and then well actually you know what not just yet so then we're going to insert our hook drop this yarn now put it over under your pointer finger to hold it back grab your new color of your yarn slip that on there and if you can try maneuvering a way to tighten that yarn and how i did that is i held the working yarn over here and then i pulled my tail and then that actually tightened it up for me but now i'm going to switch the working yarn out and then put the tail back here with the other green yarn of the main color and now I'm going to continue as if I'm doing a single crochet so you're going to go through here and then make sure you pull your working yarn <clears throat> for your main color kind of pull that a little bit tight and then you're going to finish as if you're doing a regular single crochet and that is joining yarn I'm going to have another tutorial about that so do not worry do not fret um, I am going to have a different tutorial about adding um, yarn to your work or adding a new color to your work so we're going to actually work back this way okay so I can show you where to place those single crochets at along the edge so just pause the video for a moment if you um, need to rewind it some you can and then that way um, whenever you do have your yarn attached just start with two single crochets and then we are going to go work down our border here around here here and then finish on this side and you will have a beautifully made um, hand towel washcloth dishcloth swifter cloth whatever you want to call it so Grab you some scissors as well so that way we can actually cut off our main color yarn and then just now continue working with our um, contrasting color. All right, you guys. All right, so I actually found my scissors and I was able to kind of snip the rest of that yarn off and I pulled everything once again to make sure it was nice to height and neat. Um, and whatnot so let us dive right in so you should have two single crochet uh oh two single crochets right here in that corner okay so now we're going to work a single crochet okay so this is where it gets kind of tricky because sometimes you can go through this little hole here and then here 
and then this hole here and then in here I just sometimes I just kind of find where I want to place my single crochet so I'm going to just place the first one in this hole right there. not well hole yeah in that stitch right there okay and then you're going to go into the next one one single crochet into the next one then the next one Okay, and then let me just show you where it's, you see those holes right there. So that one, then this one. Okay, and then this one, and then this one. Then this one. There, and then this one. So you're just going to go into each of those stitches like so. With, you know, inserting your single crochet. I think some individuals call it, um, the low valleys or something I have no idea you guys I just try to find a pretty place to put my stitch whenever I'm making a border and call it a day and just pray that it comes out making sense so um yeah so just continue placing one single crochet in each, each of those stitches on the side oh my gosh y'all but look at her I actually like these two colors together. Cute. All right, so just keep going. And then meet you at the end of your row. Okay. Y'all, we got rain today. When I tell you it was so nice to hear some rain falling today and it happened not once but twice it just got through raining now oh, so peaceful so pretty and in my apartments they have carports so hearing the rain hit the carport oh, chef's kiss Mwah. it was it just was so relaxing and calming so <clears throat> so we are almost at the end of our row for the border okay and so right here and then one right here and now we are at the corner so let's see I think that we're going to go into this stitch right here so we're gonna place one and two okay and now we're just going to work on the other side of our initial row and just placing one single crochet in each stitch. So where I work mine is right here. So I'm going to work my single crochets kind of like on the other side of your first row basically. This is the other side of our first row. So we're just going to place one single crochet in each stitch until the end of the row. Yeah, I don't I don't even know if I'm going to use this, but I just know <laughs> I wanted to show you all how to how to make a um dishcloth. I really think it's pretty awesome, you know, and it's really easy to do and like I said, it can be a potential gift, you know, crochet a towel and then maybe buy a bath and body set. I don't know, like for somebody, you know, so I just really Think that this is an awesome project to start off with and um, like I said you're gonna get that single crochet practice and learning a new technique of adding a different color to your work so we are almost there at the end so with this okay so we're at the end of the row all right, we're at the end of our row. So, as you can see, right here is where is the where, where we basically this is our beginning chain tail. So you see this hole right here, that little hole right there. We're going to work our two single crochets, kind of a little bit below that, because, well, you know what? Nah, we're gonna work two inside of there. So. 
we're gonna just go on in the corner we're gonna stick to the stick to the easy route so gonna insert your hook yarn over pull up a loop yarn over pull through two loops and then place another one in there okay and so whenever you are working down this this other side of your towel you want to make sure you are also working this yarn inside of the you're working this yarn inside of the work as well or you can place that yarn to the side and then we can just weave in our ends without a darning needle and I will show you that as well. So we've made our two single crochets. Now we're going to do one single crochet in each space. Those spaces just like the other side. Okay. And you're just going to keep going down the line keep going down the line y'all y'all know me what if you know me you know I'm a goofball so <clears throat> but let's see so yeah if you want to just pause the video and then come back you can um, and then I will meet you all at the end of this row. All right, so we are back at the end of the row and let's see. I wanted to show you where you're going to place your two stitches at. So it's kind of hard to tell, but right here is where you're going to place your two stitches. So one single crochet in this last stitch and then you're going to place two single crochets right there in that space so one and two okay and then you're going to just work a single crochet as if you are working one in your in your piece of work into each V stitch so you're just going to go down the line in those V stitches right there and then you are going to just continue until you get to the end. That's one thing about yarn, you can kind of manipulate it to kind of stretch it out and you know and whatnot. But this is how it should look. Look at that, y'all. Let me go up some. There it is. Look at that. So pretty. Alright, so just pause the video and then I will meet you back at the end. Alright, so we are at the end of our row and you are going to place one single crochet right beside the two that you had and then you're going to do a slip stitch. <clears throat> to make it extra secure so I actually pull it through like that okay and look at this beautiful towel her is pretty I don't know what happened over here I'm so like particular about my work but this is a dish towel oh my gosh y'all I really hope you enjoyed this video and please do not forget to hit the subscribe button um, with this, I don't really have my darning needle right now, but you would actually just sew these, uh, not sew, but weave these into the stitches. And then um, we, you know what, we'll actually do a, I'll do a separate video about showing you how to weave in your ends and we'll use this as an example. So.
be on the lookout for that video but take your time be patient and just i really hope you enjoyed this easy fun tutorial about making a dish towel and if you're, there is anything in particular that you're wanting to see let me know and then i will make a video dedicated to that don't forget to hit the subscribe button go follow my instagram and tiktok page and have a great evening bye